Hello everyone, it's me Mr. Sneaky and we are Road to Glory episode 23. It's been a little while since the last one so let's give you a full update on everything that's been going on with the account and the kingdom in server 65. Hello, so yes, we're on episode 23, which is quite nuts in the Road to Glory series. We are almost getting to the finish line. We've got a little bit more progress to go, which you're going to be able to see today. So if you've been enjoying the series for the free to play players, smash a like, comment and subscribe to the channel, guys. I'm here trying to give you a nice series to follow. And if you're all new to the channel, you can always check the playlist and, you know, go back to episode one and follow all the way through and see how the progress has been, as well as some of the high and low moments of the account. So today we're going to go over first, obviously, the account, what we've been going on, as well as then we're going to go and give you guys a little bit of an update on the server. And then, obviously, we'll round things off like always. So, with this, we've been pushing, you can see, our buildings because we need to get to City Hall 21, right? So, City Hall 21 is our main focus at the moment. So, what we've been doing is we do need to, obviously, upgrade the Alliance Market, which we've got to 17 already, which is a nice little push in the off days that you've not seen. But... We're at level 18, pushing level 19 on the Manor Hall. We're going to go all the way to 20 on this building first so we can get it ready so we can push the Alliance Market to 20. And then it'd be the simple Foundry, Herbalist Hut Wall. And then we can push towards that goal. So what we're going to do is during that off time, if you've noticed, we have spent a few gems. We've had to spend some just to get a teleport and move just because of some territorial movement. You can see we've just readjusting some areas so other players or other alliances can get in and touch passes and stuff, which is really nice to see teamwork. But... You can see also with that we've spent on a second queue. It's only 150 gems. And to be honest, we do need to do it at the moment. Because obviously some players might have invested over 5,000 gems in a second builder queue. But we've only invested up to 300 gems so far in second builders. This is the second time we've had to use it. And it's just going to cover us for three days. And it's just going to allow us... While we are doing the main focus here to use the second builder to actually upgrade the fungal tree and the elk stable. Because we need to do that for our main quest line. So we're going to try and complete that so we can get some more gems and unlock more progress for the main quest line. So that's the main city hall, you know, city progress in building state. So I hope you've been following on. We're going to go into the research and then as you can see... We are just at the moment relying on just passive time to complete some of these old earlier stages of the eco tree just while we wait to unlock obviously our scholarship and then obviously when we get our tier 4 research at City Hall 21 right so we've got a little bit to go on that but when we do start pushing the research side I'll obviously put a full video out for you guys so you can see that happening right. So, to give you guys another little update, the heroes, <clears throat> our heroes are pushing along nicely. We do need to consume a bit of CP still, which is really easy to do. We've still got a bunch of manuals if we want to just level up some of the earlier guys, but we're pretty happy where we all are at at the moment for this season. Our Guanwin almost getting to an awakened stage during that first phase, which is really good to see. We've got our Craig getting at 552, our Wild Deers at 5231. And we've even got a 5111 Atheus and a 5211 if we star him up Alloin. So it's a really good thing that we have all these accesses in the near future. We've even got a 5000, you know, uh, in this. This is going to be allowing us in the second season to pair it up with our Garwood, hopefully, allowing us to give him. You know, some sort of healing tank march now when we go up into that stage. Our Kanara as well is at 2-0. We did manage to do the trust level like we said in the last episode. So we're going to start working on her. We do have already four tokens into her from the daily bundles from the VIP store. So that's all the heroes basically that we're going to be working on. In the next season, I am going to be most likely 
leveling up all the archer commanders here that we've got because I'm gonna hopefully have all these commanders at a 5111 stage maybe in the mid season of that second season right so when we go into uh, a little bit more bits before we jump into the nitty gritty we've got our scout and if you look at our scout progress we actually have everything ready to go which is the last area so we've actually fully defogged this zone which is really cool we're going to claim our little bit of gems that we can gain here for just doing it same with the path of demise let's get that five gems but we have all these ready to go so we're gonna claim all of these towards the end of the season as well so we've got a little bit of a boost when we're going into the next season right but we've done all the defogging it's all done which is really nice we have a nice beautiful map to look at in its full glory because it is a beautiful map to look at so let's go into some extra bits with the account right so we've gone over as you can see all the account progress and just to top it off and to round everything off we are now on day 42 of the account so we've gone a little bit obviously a few days in time from the last episode but we've been obviously giving you guys all the different guides and upgrades on the updated behemoth guides as well for you to enjoy so we've had to take a little bit of a break from the series just to fill in a bit of a gap for you because you've been shouting out for that content so obviously i'm going to listen to you in that regards but when we go into our alliance now you're gonna see we have renamed we are called exn and i'm gonna put a long story short and i'm gonna obviously allow mr bn to be the one who eventually will do maybe a video on it but it does appear at the moment that all of the alliances in the boss nasty project has gone more of an independent route where they're gonna do what's in their own best interest but they might still be speaking to BN in regards to what he would align the server's goals to do, right? So I don't know what the future plans for his project or not. Obviously, check out his channel. He'll probably be posting something on it. But all I know, as you guys know, I am acting as a r3 i'm trying to play just like a majority as you players right so as anyone who might just join the game you're just gonna be an average player you don't really know any of the drama or any of the nitty you're not an officer same as me so you're gonna be just you know an average player just trying to have fun and that's what i'm doing exactly the same as you guys in this season so we are having fun when we are pushing forward we're gonna have at the end of the video a nice little necro giant run we've not been able to kill it yet because it is a very difficult raid to do in season one when there's not enough t4 units or maybe not enough players that understand the mechanics yet of this raid because it is one of the harder raids to complete for first timers which is really fun to see though when you get to see the gameplay but that pretty much sums up the episode guys we are obviously pushing obviously the buildings the research tech we've obviously gone through the heroes and the vip the last thing to showcase to you guys is we have been really lucky and we've got lucy's horn the way we've got lucy's horn if we just go into the system mail we got freezing ring we got a joyous fireworks but here we did manage to open a dark chest and get lucy's horn which is a really good thing for our account and the reason why we pumped it up as well really high in levels is because we want that fast gathering speed because the way this artifact works is you have a chance to summon a level four or five tile which is directly outside of your city so if we just quickly deploy our chak char right now <clears throat> You're going to be able to see this in action and it's a really good way later on because later on obviously when you do manage to get that lucy's horn maxed out you always manage to summon a level seven tile so there you go i've, I've leveled up obviously i summoned up this new tile i can just quickly go click gather we're going to put instead our main boy on here and we'll just throw on canara for now just so we can show that off and that's a really good artifact for us and if you guys are looking to obviously how to gather really fast this is one of the ways is actually is using this artifact off cooldown because when you do get it higher leveled up you're going to be able to use it to actually gather 
and then as soon as it's finished and gathering the tile, it's off cooldown and you can send it out again. So it becomes a really good, almost around the clock way to farm a really consistent amount of ma um, mana or you know any resource that it drops. So another way just to round up the end of the episode, use your green fingers sickle, remember, in your Alliance Gold Mines for some really fast instant gains and as well the pits are really big so you can get some really good usage out of it while you're waiting for the next pit to come around so that is road to glory episode 23 the full city update account update for you guys i hope you've been enjoying it as well as the serve update and what the future brings we're still going to be pushing forwards until the season one and seeing what happens obviously in season two and we're going to keep going forward from there right so i hope you've enjoyed it so far but from now we're going to move on to the necro giant raid that we did attempt when we first had it unlocked um really late of the night um which was a few days a couple of days ago so let's go over that i'm going to show you guys how i came across the fight and some of the little tips and tricks and bits that i've learned as well because a little bit of the arena has updated for you guys to know about so let's go over that so if you've enjoyed the video so far guys remember smash like comment and subscribe to the channel i'm mr sneaking official call of dragons content creator trying to give you guys a nice honest view of the game how to play it as a free to player as well as you know my seven months as a beta tester experience playing on the super server one so you get all that knowledge and background from me in all the videos so i hope you enjoy it and thank you for the support for the guys that we've got so far we're almost at the 2000 subscriber mark which is nuts to see um so let's go into now the necro giant so the Necro Giant Raid, here we are, zooming in just to showcase the nice little symbol. Do like the little, you know, behemoth icons when you do zoom out. It does showcase a little bit of personality between them. But here we are, we're going to be playing on the PC client while we're doing this one this time. So you can see my position in the little bottom corner here with everyone. Always, you can see the bombs away, all the bomb flingers getting flung out here dealing at least 2400 uh, damage so 2400 if you're not a big numbers guy but we're all dpsing down the necro giant and if you're new to this obviously check out the necro giant raid guide i've done i do break down all these abilities you can see on screen really nicely and make it really understandable for you guys before you jump into one of these gameplay raids so you can see when we're going through these phases, this one's a really nice and simple one. You just got to go around in a circle, right? But our job for the archers is to primarily focus down the necro giant. So if you don't know in this raid, the necro giant is weak to physical attacks. But the normal giant there, which is located so far on the right side, is weak to magical. So if you're bringing mages, you must always hit that giant. And if you are an archer, you should always, always hit the necro giant. So every phase, if you've noticed from that little transition there, when they finish the phase of whatever the skill of the Necro Giant that ability triggers, they always, always switch positions. So just remember that when you are playing DPS, because if you are looking and moving towards where the Necro Giant is, just remember they're going to switch positions and that's where the Giant will appear. So it's a nice little tip for you guys there. If you're looking, this is the Walls of Death. You can still go down to this safe spot down here, which you're going to see see me do i think i take a little bit of damage and if i don't i think i just timed it right but you can see so we're at 68,000 health here and there we go the wall is now passing me and it's gone past right and you can see another one coming past about 68,000 health here and it's still dealing no health. So there's another player that's nearby. That's the one who is taking damage there. That little mage player. You can see him just coming out of camera view now. But you can still go to these safe spots. One thing to note though. Like I said in the earlier episode of the Grow to Glory episode 23. Was if you are looking about where your mouse is moving. If you're at the top of the map. So you know where any of those 
tanks are right now. If you do drag your mouse a bit too close to those rocks or those stone hedge, you know, rock face landscapes at the top side, what will happen though, your march will some reason automatically start to walk out. So just remind like basically just watch where your mouse is that's the best one so here is the balls this is one which a lot of people hate and my march is doing it right now so you can see me trying to get into that corner that everyone knows so you can see at the bottom of the screen you normally can get into that little nook and cranny which you saw um but it wouldn't let me right it was pushing me away but in the ball phase here you want to get into generally a corner so you can just move up and down nice and easy phase but our alliance here are doing a trying to do a good job we got 38 members so we've already lost 12 members to the necro giant we've only done i believe 1.2 million damage which will occur in a moment but that is a really hard raid to again showcasing here for first attempt purposes again this is season one guys i'm a free to play player and some of these players in this raid are also free to play players but we do have obviously some of the spenders as well but it just showcases that you know not everything can be done first time and even on our server i think only two alliances were able to kill the necro giant within that august stone timer so if you don't get it don't worry it's fine you might just miss out on the augustone rewards but you will be able to still get yourself those nice rewards for the first occupation it might just take you a little bit longer than you obviously anticipated so just don't worry about it and when we get to it we get to it but we're at 35 members now we've got 1.8 million health and if you watch in a moment, the timer is at 10 seconds at the top of the screen where it says Haunting of Ill Intent. That's just showcasing the balls and how long you've got until the next what next phase is over. And just like that, it's finished. And you can see them quickly teleport in positions, the Necro being now in the bottom left corner instead of the top right. So I hope you guys have been following the video so far. I know it's a bit more of a live commentary and more of a tips and tricks side of the Necro Giant. It's a really good raid to do. It's a really fun one. And in my experience, it's the first raid, especially where it feels like a World of Warcraft raid. You know, something like an MMO. You guys might have played even Diablo or something in those regards. This feels like one of those raids. And I really, really enjoy it. So I hope they do bring out more styled raids like this where they bring out really fun mechanics where you have to dodge and do things in order to pass the skill check and then kill obviously the behemoth so right now we're at 34 members in the raid we're at 1.6 million health so for a first attempt for a lot of members that don't know what they're doing they're not doing too bad but you can see we are getting towards the end of the video because at the moment it is looking like it's going to be an L here and to my knowledge I believe I'm looking at it as well like I don't think we're going to be able to kill it and if you do believe you're not going to kill it in time and if even the enraged timer comes up on screen it most likely you want to reset right because if you don't leave in that reset timer obviously they zero all the marches that are inside and you lose everything so your hospital is going to get really filled up and you don't want your hospital filling up so let's just keep watching to see what happens obviously i'm trying to reposition here because the giant is hitting me with aoe attacks which we're not liking right now but the necro giant being pulled all the way to the left we've got this new phase here and we're wondering okay how long we've got left it's been a while and you can tell you can feel it's been a while a lot of the stronger players too are dying see even mr smart there losing out so even these balls it doesn't matter guys how strong your troops are t4 t5 these balls and all the skills do percentage based health so it's nothing about your you know how many troops that you bring or how strong they are it's always you know the same it's equally damage dealt no matter what which is really fair when it comes to a raid so if you've been enjoying the video so far guys remember smash like comment and subscribe before we get towards the end of the video this has been our first attempt at exn as you can see on the necro giant when it did come unlocked for the first time on server 65 on day i think this was about day 41 or 40 of the augustone or vip when we're looking at it 
So we're going into big DPS. We're going to see how much we can deal before, obviously, we fail. But it looks like, obviously, it is going to be a failure, especially when those Necro Giant and Giants are too close. Another little tip before the end of the video, when they are really closely linked, that little beam appears. And that beam appears, it means they are taking about 20 to 30% less damage. There's an exact number, obviously, in the Wikipedia. Just check it out, and you, which is in the full guide. This is just obviously me compensating over our attempt for the Necro Giant. So I hope you've been enjoying it and been enjoying this series, guys. I'd love to hear your feedback, what you want the channel to do in the future. Obviously, this has been a Road to Glory series for the free-to-play players, but we will be going back into the main account eventually because obviously the season's going to reset soon for us in approximately, I think, about seven days. So we're going to see what happens then on the main account. So that's going to be exciting to see. But until then, obviously, I hope you enjoy the video. Smash like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to leave the less, well, the last little bit, 10, 20 seconds, to play out itself. I hope you enjoy it. And if it shows the DPS rankings, it will show the DPS rankings for you. But if not, we will obviously showcase those. And we can do it in the next episode. Put a comment below. And if you want me to show the DPS rankings from a load of the failures, we'll show you a case though. So you can see where I've been placing. So we've been placing in a nice top 10 position generally when we've been fighting in this top 50 raid, right? So it's been really good. But we have obviously admitting defeat here. But until the next one, stay safe, stay sneaky. Peace out.